Hi, imaginary friends. Welcome back. I uh, hopefully you've come for you can take lesson eighty four. Today we're going to identify quadratic functions. Welcome, welcome to quadratic function. Uh, these functions are so prevalent, especially in algebra and algebra two. Um, but uh, we need to discuss what actually that means, quadratic. Well, quad, what's that make you think of? It may make you think of squares, right? Um, and that's pretty much what we're doing here. Quadratic functions start off with something called the squaring function. And we're going to write it like this with this f of x business. That is, we're going to plug in something into our math machine here, and then out's going to come something else. So if we plug in, uh, well, let's do it like this. Let's make an xy chart. If I plug in a 1 into this squaring function, out comes 1 squared or 1. If I plug in a 2 into the squaring function, out comes a 4. If I plug in a 3, out comes a 9. If I plug in a zero, out comes a zero. If I plug in to the squaring function, I plug in a negative one, out comes a positive one. It squares negative one times negative one. If I plug in negative two, out comes a four. If I plug in a negative three, out comes a nine. So I'm going to use this here in a, in a little bit to, to show you then what the picture of the squaring function looks like. Now, um, this right here is, is just the beginning. This is uh, what we might call a parent function. That is, this is where we start, and then we can start adding things to it. We can multiply things in there. We can um, we can subtract things from this to, to make it change. But the basic important part of this function is the x squared part of it. That's why you'll see this, this other thing called standard form which is a generalized way of talking about the squaring function. Standard form, I'm going to write it in function form, would be f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, quadratics can have up to these three parts to them, three uh, terms in, in the polynomial in the quadratic function. Let me talk about a few of these important bits here. This part here is the quadratic term or the part that does the squaring. Also in Italian quadrato is the word for square like the middle of a town kind of thing. This part right here should look familiar. That's just taking a regular line. Maybe we could have said mx plus b. Same thing I take my x times a constant plus some type of, or make it a coefficient, plus some constant. So uh, we have this part being the part that has to do with a line, and then this over here is the constant. So one more thing that I have to say about this. B could be 0, and C could be 0, but A cannot be 0. If a is 0, this thing, what we would say, degenerates into a line. And uh, the way that we have it here, this x squared part actually makes our line curvy shape rather than, than straight, just straight up linear. So there's our one, our one uh, little extra thing that we have to say so that we know the rules that we're going to play by. Um, righty, so there's your introduction to the standard form. Uh, that means that we could have, well, we could add stuff to this. We say plus 2x minus 3. Or we could just say x squared uh, plus 4. Or we could have 3x squared plus 4. All those other things are just extra things that we're doing to that most important part, which is the x squared part to make it quadratic. So there you go. You may be asked to identify different things about it, but let's take uh, let's take our initial 
set of ordered pairs from the squaring function and, uh, and graph these things out. I'm going to try to do this. Uh, we're going to take our point 1, 1, plot that, take our number 2, and then go 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to take 3, 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, will be way up here. Uh, the point 0, 0. And then if you notice, all these points here, the negative x's and the positive y's, these are the same values here, which means that this graph is symmetrical, that it looks the same on the left side as it does on the right side. I could take a mirror right down, down the center, and I would have symmetry. Symmetry is beautiful because symmetry allows us to make predictions. We only need to know really about half of this picture to draw in the other half. We call the, the picture of that graph right there, that shape there is a parabola. Parabola is kind of more of the geometry word for this. Quadratic is more of the algebra term for this, but they're the same thing. A quadratic function graphs out a parabola. And every parabola is the same. It's the same basic shape. All we're going to do from there is move it up, down, left, right. We're going to stretch it out. We might might flip it upside down but really those are just about all the things that we can do to uh, to a quadratic equation so um, let's take a different one that's the basic squaring function I'm gonna I'm gonna put something a little bit different into into my machine here I'm gonna change it so that it's uh, equals negative 3x squared going to make a table. I'm going to tell you about how you could do that on, on uh, your calculator. I'll draw out the instructions here. Uh, we would change this in your calculator to instead of f of x, we might put it in as y1. So you remember how we've been graphing lines, you can press that y equals button. And uh, you can clear out stuff that's in there. And we're going to type in negative. Make sure you use the negative and not the, not the minus sign. Negative 3x. And then your squaring button's right over here. Okay? Negative 3x squared. And you can graph it to see that shape, but it's going to make a parabola. Especially if you're on zoom 6. Um, what might be surprising is that your parabola is upside down. And we will talk about that here in a minute. But what I'd like you to do is to go second graph and make a table. Second graph and make a table. Make sure that if your uh, table is set up correctly with second uh, window, that the table could start at, let's say, negative 5 and go by 1s. So you're, like if you go to second window and do your table set, it should look like this. Start it at negative 5 and make your delta table equal 1. So then when you go second graph you get you get a chart like this you get a bunch of ordered pairs which then you could graph and probably the only ones you're going to want to graph are the ones that are closest to the origin uh, in the book they have you try I think they have you try these but let's see what the inputs are or what the outputs are when we input these I'm going to go down my list and see that negative 2 maps to negative 12 Negative 1 goes with negative 3, 0 goes with 0, 1 goes with negative 3, and 2 goes with, with negative 12. Again, I think you can see the symmetry here. We have the same point there. I'm going to change colors here. Got the same point 0, 0. We haven't changed that at all. But now when we go to negative 1, we drop down to negative 3. When we're at positive 1, we're down at negative 3. So you can see the symmetry coming here. And then when we're at negative 2, we have to drop down to negative 12, which would be somewhere down here. Positive 2, the same. Connect the dots. We got ourselves an upside down parabola. But nevertheless, we've got symmetry, the same on the left side as it does on the right side. And it's curved rather than, than a straight line. 
So if you want to generate some data points before you go ahead and do some graphing, you can always just type in your equation into your uh, y equals uh, function thing there, and then uh, go second graph, and you'll get yourself a table. You can also uh, split screen that thing, go into your mode, and you can ask it to see the picture and see the table at the same time. Maybe we can talk about that when you come to class. Now, this one was different in that it was upside down. So what part of what I did here makes it upside down? Was it the three part, or was it the negative part? Well, maybe you guess that it's the negative part that turns this thing upside down. And now, instead of squaring something, and usually squaring takes away any negatives, it adds a negative on there. So if we had um, two and we squared it, and then we made that negative, then it would have to flip over and drop down here. The, in the standard form, we had ax squared. It's the a part that determine whether it's going to open up or whether it's going to open down. So let's generalize this. Let's say if a is greater than zero, or if a is positive number, then it means that our parabola opens up. Okay, it opens up. And if a is less than zero, if it's negative, that means that our parabola opens down. It's a sad parabola. It's a sad, sad parabola or something like that. That's basically what we want to look at. So parabola is really cool because if you can look at the equation, you can pick out a whole bunch of things about it right away. Um, another example of this is that when it opened down, this point here, 0, 0, was its maximum value. It's the highest that it goes. And then the rest of the graph is all down here. And when A was positive, this is my lowest point, and the rest of the graph is up. So later on, we'll talk about domain and range, where it goes in the X and the Y directions. Um, there's a whole lot of things we can figure out by just looking at the equation itself. Or we can get a picture. We can get a picture and evaluate the picture as well. Just a couple other things I want to say about parabolas. Here, this is just a really brief intro to parabolas, is that um, there are a lot of real-world parabolas, okay? Lots and lots of them. And so you're going to get a section there on, on applications. Why are I ever going to use this in the real world? Well, number one, you got, you got free fall or projectiles or projectile motion. Free fall would be like throwing a rock over a cliff and that thing follows a parabolic path. Jumping out of an airplane. Okay. Um, projectile motion would be uh, we're launching stuff and it goes up and then it comes down. Throwing a football, hitting a home run, using the drinking fountain. Uh, there are lots and lots and lots of these. They even take that basic shape and they make they make mirrors out of it with very special properties. Whoa, there's the llama guy. Oh, look at that infinite mirrorness. Isn't that fun? That is. Mirrors are shaped with, as a problem and it has properties that allow you to focus. If you look at your uh, your mirrors, the front of uh, the lights on your cars. The mirror behind it is a parabola, and the light is the little diode is like right there at what's called the focal point of a paraboloid, a, a parabola that's spun around an axis to make a, a three-dimensional shape rather than two. So you have one of these free fall or projectile motion things in there, but again, we could add two, we could add three drinking fountain or rockets or any number of things, mirrors, home runs, it's all projectile motion. So uh, they're going to give you that in standard form, 16p squared completes with a negative. You've got a time aspect to it, you've got a height aspect to it, you've got like a starting distance aspect to it, 
uh, that's that's all quadratic. Nothing super fancy there. It's all of a certain family of, of graphs. Uh, let's come back and ask some questions in class. We'll see you soon.